going on, guys? It's the twins, Lulu and Lala. And this is another episode of CEO Unplugged. And today with us, we have a beautiful doctor. Uh, she's a pediatrician, and she goes by the name of Dr. Denise Nunez. She is also the founder of Niño de Caridad Foundation, and she was also one of the most powerful women in last year's People in Español magazine. She is slaying in the business, and she's doing a whole lot for the community, especially the Latino community. Yes. And so, doctor, thank you so much for being here with us. And felicitaciones. Oh <laughs> Thank you so much for the invitation and thank you um, for everything. You guys are awesome. I, I was saying I was just in shock <laughs> meeting you in person <laughs> via Zoom. You guys are beautiful. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you so, so much. much. And actually, thank you for doing everything that you're doing in the community. Um, for anyone that's not familiar with Niños de la Caridad Foundation, in your own words, with a quick synopsis, if you could just let people know what that foundation is all about and why it's important for the community. So I think just very simple is that I want to make sure we can create more um, Latino leaders in the community. Um, I am, that is my goal. And we're doing that through education. So making sure our kids graduate from high school. We have a huge dropout in the Bronx. I don't know if you know that. Um, we're like one of the top uh, places, counties that actually have the highest dropout in the entire United States. Um, and we need to educate our kids. We need to make sure that they can see people like you people like me um, to be role models for them. So I decided to do that after working. I am also, besides a pediatrician, I'm a critical care doctor. So I am the doctor, so you understand, that intubated all the patients in COVID. That's the way of kind of easy to say. Oh, wow. So in the hospital, I work with the sickest kids and the sickest parents. And um, I saw there were so many things that we can do to make sure we can prevent these kids from getting admitted at the community level. So I decided to bring my knowledge from the ICU to the community level and to work with the teenagers because I think those, the kids, our teenagers are the ones that were hit the most um, with um, you know, behavioral, mental health, with diseases or parents died, stayed alone. And um, I decided to, you know, slow, slowly right. uh, create this beautiful foundation that helps parents, that helps teenagers. Um, go through the path of high school, finish high school, and get some secondary degree to make sure we become leaders in the future. Yeah, yes. I was looking through the website, and it's it's amazing to see all the programs that uh, the foundation has. And you mentioned some of them as far as like helping write essays for colleges and even applying for the college uh, scholarships and what scholarships uh, these kids are entitled to. So and even helping with homeworks. I know that there's a lot of parents out there that are working when the kids come out. And the fact that you have this program where you, they can help the kids with Homer, because there are some times where, you know, they don't know or they don't understand and they need that extra push um, yeah. to guide them in finishing just as homework, as simple as that may seem. Absolutely. As simple as that may seem. But you know what? One of the things I realized being uh, in the Bronx, working in a private practice, so I also have my own private practice. So I have a, a group of practices and there I realized that you have a Latino last name and you're in the Bronx and you have a little bit of difficulty reading, right away you have learning disability, right. or you have autism, or you have Asperger's. Remember that our community lives check by check, hour yeah. by hour. They have no, they have, they don't have the means of bringing their kids um, to get tutoring or help with homework. They don't right. know the language either, right? Exactly. So we created this program named Caterpillar Homework Club, where we partnered with five colleges around the Bronx. And what they, these kids do, these are college students, they come in, they also do it virtually, and we assign them four kids and they just help them with their homeworks and also become that liaison between the teacher and the mom. So now they meet every month with the teachers, they help the parents, and we help them with their homework and their grades have gone over 70% up. They've That's been amazing. undiagnosed. I know, isn't that something? Yeah, undiagnosed that is with learning disability. You know, so it helps so much the community with something so simple as just helping them do their homework. Now, I know you also have uh, some type of internship uh, program. So not only are the students uh, that need help with homework gaining from this, but also college students are now gaining credits for college, which is exactly. amazing. So it's like a, a everyone's double. Everyone's winning. Yeah, everyone's winning. Yeah. Yeah. So we created that internship program. So they actually they get credits in college and they help our kids do their homeworks. Isn't that amazing? So it's full circle. 
full circle. Love it. And they give back, right? They're giving back to the community that's in need, which is the most important thing. I think, sure, the credit is great, but I think serving and giving back and seeing what you're doing helps build you also, not also as a professional, but as a person. Yes. Exactly. And it helps with that one-on-one interaction, like a human interaction and not, you know, because nowadays everything is this thing. On and so absolutely. Now, you, now you have like building like people skills where you're able to communicate with one another. So yes. that's, that's great too. Now yes. I know that you have a, a conference called um, Latinos Destinados a Triunfar. <laughs> Sometimes I get tongue twisted. Uh, Latinos <laughs> Destined <laughs> to Triumph. It's basically the translation, Latinos <laughs> Destined to Triumph. Um, what does this conference entail and when is it usually held? Great. So what happened is that we also have a program and it's in Spanish too. Um, it's Leaders of the Future. Um, Latinos Asinados at Triunfar comes from this program we have. It's called Bronx Leaders of the Future. And there we have teenagers and that's where we help our teenagers with the process of college. In that program, we have an annual conference um, named Latinos Asinados at Triunfar where we expose these kids to specific type of people all Latinos, leaders in the community, national leaders that come and speak to these kids for two hours. They have a one-on-one -on -one interaction. We have panel discussion and we show them how difficult it is to succeed, right? How difficult it is to get yeah. to make sure you get to your goal, but how great it is when you can do that. And when you fall down, lift yourself up again. So all these stories, when you hear them, wow, it's great. But when you see that person one-to-one, -one, you can ask them questions. Um, it's, it changes their lives. So we started with like 50 kids. This is our fourth year now. Um, then we went up to like almost 200 kids, now 500 kids. And wow. this year it's going to be 2000 um, Bronx students, high school students. Um, and we're having this as a hostos community college It's a completely free event. And the conference is going to be a little bit different. We're going to do a uh, a TED Talk type of conference with okay. a lot of leaders and expos where we're going to show kids different career paths, not only the regular being a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer, but let's say I work a lot with, with patient care coordinators. I work a lot with IV nurses that put IV in, or sonograms, technicians, all that. They're going to have that. They're going to be able to touch these machines, work, you know, have a little, some time with them to explore different career paths. So that is this October. We're thrilled. We have a, a dinner that we're actually ready to raise funds. It's going to be April 28th um, to raise funds for this um, event. But um, that is, as I said, our signature conference um, with that. That's amazing. First of all, I don't mean to cut you off, but to start off from 50 and then now be at oh, 2000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a great accomplishment. And I think it's I great for the kids because when we were in that process of, you know, trying to get to college and not kind of knowing like, okay, what, which field are we going to go into? The fact that you have, you're giving them this opportunity to see where it is that they want to go. I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's okay not to know, right? Right. Because I tell the kids all the time, like, it's okay not to know. I just, we, all, we also have um, a TV show and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. But it, in our last episode, there was one of the, and it was unscript we were just we were shooting and they were asking me questions and um they were one of my students was talking about she wanted to do something with mental health she wanted to help with mental health she's 16 wow uh, but she just didn't like the needles <laughs> <laughs> and I was like that's awesome and she looked at me like I had three heads like yes so instead of being so what you're talking about is like you think you're sort of thinking about psychiatry right she's like yes but I don't like blood. I don't like needles. I don't like blood pressure. I said, great. You don't have to be a psychiatrist to help somebody with mental health issues, right? Correct. You can also be a psychologist. You do not have to go through the path of medicine, but you can go through another path. And she was like, for real? So we talked about how to do that. And that just came up of that question. Um, and um, so there's so many careers that you can do, but you just need to be exposed, right? If mm -hmm. you don't see it, you don't know it, right? So we exactly. expose our kids to so many things that they can do in life. Um, dancers, singers, you know, writer, um, uh, coding, like so many things they can do. It's, you know, it opens an entire new world for them and they feel included, right? They yeah. feel like, okay, it's okay. It's okay yeah. not to know. I will figure it out on the way. Yeah. And you mentioned it, the, the TV show. Yes. How did how did that idea come about? Because it sounds like it was something you kind of just tested the waters organically and it kind of just built yeah. into something bigger. So what was the, be, uh, the idea behind all that? 
So what happened was that with COVID, I'm, I'm one of the Latinas pediatric intensivists. So one of the few, we don't have a lot of in pediatric intensivists and especially Latina. So uh, in the Spanish TV shows, Univision and Telemundo, they needed somebody that spoke Spanish that can communicate with the family. So they were asking me to interview a lot. So I was interviewing for all these two years a lot. Um, and in one of those interviews, um, I was in the middle of it, it was raining. We were open one of our sites. I was in charge of a tons of sites um, where we did vaccination for our community. We went to the schools, we went to the basements of the churches, try to reach out to our community, right? Because right. remember in COVID, we were the ones that were hit the most. We, mm-hmm. we were hospitalized the most, we died, right? Yeah. A huge amount of us died. So we needed to come to them and educate them and why testing, why vaccines. Um, so in one of those interviews, it was raining. Um, there was a little bit of a Remember right now, there was these two ladies that were not very happy with each other. And one was going to come and talk to the other one. But I was right in the middle. Oh, boy. <laughs> and I saw this coming. And they were like, one, two, three, go. It was alive. And I was like, you know what? I'm in the ICU. It's all stress. So when I'm stressed out, I just calm down. So I did my interview. And everybody was like, when, they, when, they, when I finished, they were like, oh, my God, this was great. And I said, for real? OK, thank you, God. <laughs> and right there and then, Bronx Net comes to me and goes, uh, Dr. News, I want to offer you a TV show. And I was like in the middle of the rain, tired, not sleeping from the day before. And I was like, thank you, but no, thank you. I really, you know, I'm busy. I can't do this now. So then later on, they just insisted. And I was thinking, I was like, wait a second. I think this is a great opportunity, not for me, but for our kids. Yeah. They're offering me a TV show. I have a foundation. Let me just say, let me just see what happens. So we had a meeting and I said, okay, I'll do it. But I'll come up 30 seconds and I'm gonna give this to my kids. I will run it, don't worry about it. The kids run the TV show, they write the scripts, they produce it with two other producers. Um, They interview the panelists, they do everything. These kids have become public speakers now. That's amazing. Um, It makes me happy to hear this, yes. Yes, and they do all this themselves and you should see them talking. They're actually my MCs at the conferences. Wow. They're, they're the MCs. We sit down with them a whole week. We, we go over all the bios and they prepare their own questions and they're, they run the whole show. I'm, an, I'm just behind there supporting them for moral support so they know that I'm there and my team is there, but they do everything. And that has changed their lives. Of These course. are kids that never had the chance to do this in the Bronx. And now they have their own TV show and it's called Leaders of the Future. That's how the name changed. It was Latinos Asinados a Triunfar. Right. But then they sat down with me one day and said, Dr. Nunez, I, I, I They don't like Spanish. the name. <laughs> <laughs> Can we switch it? They were like, we have, we have no class today. I was like, what are you talking no class? It's like, no, 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 no. We want to, so I said, okay, you want a class? You want to switch it? You switch it. You tell me what you want. And they wanted Leaders of the Future. And I said, that's it. That's amazing. And what a great way for those that want to be in television or in some type of like broadcasting or journalist. This is a perfect opportunity. It builds their character. It builds their confidence. And they're getting the knowledge and what it takes to put on a show or to run a conference or to speak yes. in front of people. Uh, I think it's amazing. I think it's great that you're doing this. Yes, yeah, they told me it's like we never knew that to just do a, like a 10 minute or five minute interview. You need to have like like 10 people behind you. And I said, yes, it's an entire team. Yeah, it's it two producers, village. the people from the run the light, you know, the cameraman, the scripts, the, you know, everything. And they're like, wow, this is just to see that little part in TV. I'm like, yes, that's what it takes. Yeah, they learned like the importance of crossing their T's and dotting their I's. Yes. Uh, even if it's just a, like you said, a, a 15 minute segment or whatnot. But this is great. It really makes me happy because I think back when we were teenagers and we were kind of, you know, going through the struggle of not knowing and hoping and wishing that there was more, more out there. And this is perfect. Now, it may sound silly, but I know this is in the Bronx. What yes. happens to those that maybe live in Brooklyn that have caught wind of your foundation and kind of want to be part of it? Is it only for those that are in the Bronx or can no. it, does this extend to the different no. girls? I did it in the Bronx uh, because that's, that's, it's called Bronx Leaders of the Future, but the TV show is Leaders of the Future for everybody. Um, no, they come from, even from Jersey, by the way. Okay. Um, I started in the Bronx because I, um, well, where I have my foundation um, it's a blessing from God because what we did is that we have the pediatric practice is right on front and then the mm-hmm. urgent care at the other side. So um, we actually have the full spectrum of about 30,000 families that we serve. 
So uh, I thought that that was, you know, enough that we can just help the kids of the Bronx. But we realized that a lot of people from other places were coming. So we opened it up to anybody that would want to come um, and join us. And um, even kids are not Latinos, I would not say no. We no, we don't say no to our kids are not Latinos because um, they deserve um, they deserve help from us too. So yes. That's good to know. That is now, good to know. There is something else called um, De Latinas a Latinas. Now yes. you are a very uh, well powerful Latina and you know how in this business sometimes, you know, Latinas, we have to push a little harder and oh kind of show people, you know, we deserve this spot. How, what is that all about? And how has it been for you to be the CEO and, you know, gain the respect that you deserve? Exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you really have to prove yourself. It is impressive um, how much you have to prove that you are worth it, that you're knowledgeable, that you know what you're doing. Um, it's just, it, you know, you can come up with it. And this is just to say, you can come up with one idea and it takes months to get approved. Somebody else can come up with another idea and it gets approved right away. Yeah. Um, and it could be your idea, mm -hmm. but it wasn't yeah. hurt, right? That has happened to me since I started. The same way when I wanted to start my pediatric practice, I just found walls and walls. I opened the first urgent care owned by a Latina that's ICU style. It's the first, first one. It's not a regular urgent care. It's an urgent care um, that um, you don't only see walk-in patients, but you can intubate. Oh, wow. It came perfect for COVID yeah. because yeah. it's like an e freestanding ER. But when I proposed it, everybody was like, ah, oh, and in the Bronx, no, that, you know, you can't do that. I opened it up. I said, I am doing this. I'm doing this for the community. So anything you want to do with your heart and you know you have a goal and you have a mission, you have to do it. So that is what this Latinas and Latinas is all about. It's all my moms that cannot afford to go to conferences like we do. Like we can go to conferences, yeah. uh, empowerment conferences, and to you know to to stay positive and to complete our goals. All that that our our moms don't have that. Our moms from the foundation don't have it from the Bronx. Most of them are illegal. They don't have document. They're undocumented moms, right? So we give them, we offer them a safe place where they can meet. Um, women that have their businesses already um, and they can ask them questions. It was really funny when I started the first, when I did my first, first one, we invited 50 women. What happened was that by mistake, I have two assistants and they both thought 50 each. Oh, <laughs> so it was 100. Oh. So about 115 came. Wow. Um, we actually had to ask people to stand up. There were some men to stand up and leave and we had all the men downstairs because they kind of didn't realize it was just for women. Yeah. <laughs> <Some of the laughs> Get out. <laughs> we had to like take them out. So what I did is I, um, half of my friends um, in the business world came, not all, I didn't know everybody, but a lot of my friends business world came and all these moms and out there were undocumented also came. So what I did is I stood everybody up at the beginning and I had half the tables switch. So everybody would meet everybody else. And that was just outstanding. It was a two hour event. It lasted almost four hours. I was wow. like 10 o'clock and I was like, okay, we're done. We really need <laughs> to go. Um, and we just provided them with emotional tools. That's the first thing you need to do. You make sure that they're safe, that it's okay, that you can start at any age you want. It doesn't matter. You're not 20 or 30s. It's fine. But okay. if you want to do something, you want to accomplish something, you just have to make sure you, you, you do your research, mm -hmm. right? you have to network with other people because other people have done it already. So why start from the scratch? Why not start at that up a level, right? Yeah. And then just put all your effort into it and your positivity and just get it done. You're going to fall. They're not going to believe in you. It doesn't matter. It's you. You're the one who matters and who you're serving. So that's what the Latinas and Latinas are. It's a program in the foundation, helping our Latinas to get their business up and their hopes up and stay positive no matter what they, they and that's face. Be afraid. I find that some of the uh, older generations are like kind of like scared or not. They don't know. They didn't have that opportunity. So I appreciate the fact that you're doing that. I, I just think and you're like, the perfect example. You said it yourself. You know, a lot of people um, kind of frowned upon it when you first started it. And here you are. You said, look at me. I did it. Yeah. And, 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 and I tell them some of the stories that people don't know. And, and I never thought about even saying it. I can't remember. I had an interview once. And for some reason, they asked me a question. And I 
remind, remembered that when I came, I was born here, but I was raised in DR. So, so Spanish is my second, my, my first language. I right. think in Spanish, everything is in Spanish. I translated my head what I'm going to say, right? But I remember I came here and I slept on the floor for three months. Wow. I literally did because I had nowhere to, I didn't, I didn't have a bed. I was on the floor. I had no light. I was in Jersey. There's no transportation like New York. And the electricity oh. is not like in New York, like you need to have lamps. Yeah. There's no like bulbs. It's true. It's like impressive. It's you don't know true. that, but it's true, right? I don't know if you guys ever. Yeah, we live in Jersey, so we know exactly what you're talking right? about. Right, <laughs> right. So when I say this, when I said that story for the first time, I was like, for real? I'm like, yeah. It's like, you know what? Maybe I should say the story. Should I, I should tell these ladies this is how it was. And that's how it was. I I worked, I walked two hours on a Sunday from Hackensack to Rutherford to take oh my, my first God. class. And as soon as I got there, the first person that I saw, he's still there because every time I say his name, people are like, oh, he's still there. He said, excuse me, can you stop right there? I said, where are you going? I said, I'm going inside the auditorium. He's like, what for? Just like that, in my broken English, because I couldn't remember how to, I, mean, I was in Dominican Republic for so many years. And he goes, what, what are you here for? I said, I'm gonna become a pediatrician. He's like, go back where you came from. <gasps> like that, can you imagine? You oh come from goodness. a country of love. Like we're just, you know, yeah. my parents with so many values. I never understood I was Latina. For me, I was just a regular person. Here's oh what I'm like, oh, I'm Latina. You, it's so funny that you even say that because we were over the weekend. I don't know why we the conversation came up. And I was telling Lala that growing up to me, I never experienced that. Mm-hmm. I was always, I like, it wasn't, it didn't matter if it was black, white, Hispanic, Asian. To me, everything was like, the we're same, all the right? same. I so know, it wasn't right? until I got to college and we got older where I started like, okay. either I lived like in a bubble, my naiveness, or I just didn't understand. No, you lived with love. Yeah. I'm like, every, like, I didn't understand that until I started traveling and, you know, like, you see how different parts of the country are and you just start seeing, okay, start I understand. I understand now, but now growing getting- up. I didn't experience that. It's this is so thing, mind-boggling. Right? Yes. I was like, Latina? I'm like, what is like, what's the difference? <laughs> I was like, We're no, you're not human. Latina. You're from whatever you're. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. It hit me hard. It really did. And my kids too. My kids, they're, you know, raised and born in DR, but came very little. So they know they, they didn't even know they were Dominican <laughs> up to not too long ago. And uh, <laughs> and my son, I remember when he went to college, he called me, texted me, he's like, mom. I just realized I'm not white. I said, what are you talking about? You've never been white. <laughs> He's like, no, mommy, look at the pictures. I'm really not white. I said, dude, you're not. You're Dominican. I said, yes. <laughs> he was so cute. But it was so, like, it was naive. He's like, I'm not. I guess they made sure that he understood that he was Latino. That's right. what it really was, right? We're, we're all, all, this, we're all human. <laughs> what does it mean to you to be a community doctor? It means, oh my God, so many things. It means um, having in my hands, the opportunity of helping my community. That's what it really means, serving, making sure our community goes up to another level, right? Educating them. Why is everybody else so, why wasn't the other, why weren't the other, um, I don't wanna say races, other people, everybody else not hit as hard. They were well-educated. They knew about how to take care of themselves, preventive medicine. They had access to medications. Our families didn't have even access to medicines right? They couldn't Mm -hmm. find a pharmacy that was open for them. They didn't know that they can deliver their medications, vaccines, right? So, so being a community doctor helps me be in direct contact with my community and help them. So that for me, I think has been the best. As you know, I am an ICU doctor and you've ever heard about an ICU doctor. We've never worked in the community. Like I never thought I was going to work in the community. That was not my goal. My goal was to be in the hospital. ICU is the highest level there is of pediatrics. Mm-hmm. You work with patients who are dying, mm-hmm. literally, right? That's what you, that's, I do CPR. That's what I do. Make sure people come back to life if they die. That's, that's my main goal. And I never for my life thought that I was going to go back to the community and see that I can work with them and make sure they do not get into the ICU. Right. Because the reason that they went to the ICU is because they didn't understand that using the pump for asthma when you're tight or coughing doesn't mean you're going to get addicted. And that's why you didn't use it. And that's why I found a kid at 16 year old um, brain dead because oh he did not take his pump and he had an asthma attack and his mom didn't want him to take him. He was going to get addicted. I think what so you're doing things, is you're also building the trust. 
Exactly. Right? You're building the trust with the community, with the doctors, because a lot of us, a lot of people are scared or like you just mentioned, they don't know that it's not addictive. I'm asthmatic, so I do have a pump, so I totally get it. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. I think that you're bringing the trust uh, into it. Yeah, and, if, and how much more rewarding has it been? I mean, it's rewarding as it is being an ICU doctor because you, you you do so much, but now that you're with the community and you've been involved in it, how much more rewarding oh, has that been? been? Oh, more than what I ever even thought. And you know what? I, I remember when I started, I was, I have to say this, I was, I've never lived in the Bronx. You know, I, I was always Dominican, then Jersey. And um, I was born in Manhattan in Washington Heights. So when I came to the Bronx, I was like, it was scared, you know, <laughs> the community was different. They spoke a little bit different, a little more aggressive than what I was used to. So I would cry. <laughs> I would really literally cry. I was like, oh my God. So I did my residency in the Bronx and my fellowship in the Bronx. And I was so upset. I would pray to God every day to just like finish and get out of here. I was like, I didn't, I need to leave. Then I realized, I was like, wait, I, there's a reason I'm here. You know, my people really need me. And it's been just a blessing knowing that we're able to help our community. That for me is like, it couldn't be a better place. And that they're so receptive, which is a great thing. Absolutely. They're receptive, the parents, the, you know, the kids, and, and they change. We all change, you know, when we have the opportunity, um, it really works. And, you know, it is much more than rewarding. I'm, I'm very happy and that actually God brought me here and I'm here to stay. Well, we're very happy that you are here and that you've done so much for the community yes. and you have all these programs, not only for adults, but for kids as to a really, a real eye opener for us um, and the so help that you're doing to the community. And we just really appreciate and the fact that you are a Latina woman Woo! from the Dominican Republic doing big things. Um, it's just, <laughs> it just makes us very happy. It inspires us actually. So we just wanted to say thank you for doing everything that you're doing and thank you for taking the time and speaking with us. Yes. Oh my God. It's, you know what, first of all, you totally impressed me. Both of you are gorgeous, both. And I never thought you were <laughs> twins. <laughs> you look exactly the same. And I'm so happy that you have this program where you bring in Latino women and talk about, you know, what they're doing in the, and whatever field they are. It's, it's, it's great to be acknowledged. It's great to have uh, people like you that bring us together. It's just, um, I'm, I'm very honored to be here uh -huh. and, um, and very happy that you guys are doing this. this. This really means a lot because as you know, a lot of us don't get acknowledged as much, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. um, let's say one person opens this little thing. Oh my God, it's a big thing. I have five businesses and it's very rare that people talk about it, right? right. So, which is fine because it's the most important thing is having, you serving the community, but right. what you're doing is just outstanding. And I really wish you the best. Well, thank on and you. everything you're doing because it's it is it is great it, it, you, you're making my day <laughs> you feel so well, important <laughs> <laughs> you I are important you. and we we need more people like you to do more for their community so thank you again for being with us if people want information how they can help how they can donate and how, how they, they could reach you how they could be part of Absolutely. it give us your social medias give us the yes. the website go ahead so I think the best way is going into my um, social media or my website, which is exactly my name. It's just www.doctor, so D-R, Denise, D-E-N-I-S-E, Nunez, N-U-N-E-Z, dot com. You have all the information there. So Dr. Denise Nunez dot com. Um, you have all my businesses, all my practices. My foundation is there. All the information is there. It's very simple. Thank you once again. And thank you for putting the Latina woman up on that pedestal where it needs to be. We appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you, you too. Thank you for everything you guys are doing and for making sure people know and acknowledge what we are doing, what all of us Latinas are doing. This is just amazing. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome a representar.